Rolling, rolling. Okay, so we're gonna do an unboxing and an explanation of everything that's in the Elite Pack. So this is the pack that we designed, which is everything that we've got, which makes you clean windows faster, better, safer, except the deep frame uh, brushes for commercial work and the flat hose pack. Though those ones are kept separate. So the 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 idea of the Elite Pack is, I can be opening it while we're talking, this is what you get, right? You get a shock stop, and you'll either get a tactical or a warrior. Tacticals, are th this is a three-story pack, and if you've got shock stop and warrior, it'd be a four-story pack. And this is like any window, anywhere, anytime. So this is the kit for professional window cleaners. It doesn't include any filters, right? So the pure water side is a different decision. And all the efficiency that you're going to get, you're going to get from having brushes and poles and pure water systems don't give you any ROI. They're just a necessary part of waterbed window cleaning. All right, so let's have a look at this. This is very cool. So the first thing you get is actually a list of everything, a little diagram of everything that should be in here and a little check list on the back so you can go tick, 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 tick and say, yep, I got it all, right? So we'll lay all these out. in here. Hmm, nicely done. That's another brush because the brush is what cleans the glass so that's why we always stress that your efficiency, your greatest increase in efficiency is going to come from your brushes. Got some high flow tubes, we'll put that over there. A grip and check it. Uh, yes, this goes with another brush. And cool. Right there. This is Rhino High Flow Guide Sheet. So that goes over there. I don't have too many stickers out here. The Max Reach. The HG Heavy Duty Goose Neck. Sweet. <laughs> ah. Ooh. Oh, this is lots of goodies. Yes. Another keeper. Pole cleaning. Kink. Ah, oh, yes, I know what that is. Some connectors, some prisms, and some power control. You should reveal AA84. So this is the 84th radial brush we've made, and this is. That's a PET protective box, so... Every brush comes with that. Because the brushes are not cheap. Like, each of these brushes are like $200, so that's one, two, three, four, five, is a thousand dollars worth of brushes already mm. here, which is the benefit of buying an Elite Pack. Mm. And then this, oh, it's important here, sitting in with a radial brush is the instructions for radial. Right. And there's a special radial kit which has got the tension adjuster wrench. Now, I'll just make this point. We have one, two, three, four, five little brush packs and you will not necessarily get five. I might see if we can consolidate that into one pack for everything that you need. Alrighty, so, oh, here's another box. Reload is actually an, it's an efficiency tool because when you're a window cleaner, like my background is I was actually a window cleaner and I know what it's like three, four hours into window cleaning, your brain starts to go cloudy, you kind of get hypnotized by being a window cleaner. And what happens is that you know that you can switch from a 12 inch to a 16 inch or from, a, from, a, from an all rounder to a window weapon. You know you can become more efficient but your brain says I don't want to go back to my vehicle. So the idea of reload is that we're actually going to carry it on our hip and you can have a second brush in there. Mm. In order for us to pack inside the boxes, Connect is actually broken down into three parts. Otherwise it gets too long and makes the boxes too big.
All right. We are assembling connects. And boom. Great. Okay. So sometimes I hear people go, um, oh, like you should buy our pole and brush from one of our competitors because Reach it sells you all the stuff you don't need. And I would beg to differ immensely. What it is really saying is that they don't have all this stuff, so they can't offer it to you. And if they could, they would, because you do need it if you're going to be a professional window cleaner, because it's all about efficiency. The issue about whether their system would clean windows, whether our system cleans windows, the answer is obviously yes, because it's just rubbing a brush on glass and rinsing it. So they all clean windows. The question is which one cleans faster? And that's why you know you need the Elite Pack, because this is any window, anywhere, any time, and you clean faster. And that's what gives you the hourly rate. So you spend, you know, seventeen hundred dollars through to two thousand dollars on this kit here, and you'll be earning one hundred and fifty, two hundred, two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars an hour, compared to the other systems, which you might be earning seventy-five to one hundred dollars an hour. So this is a sixteen-inch all-rounder. So sixteen inches is the measurement. You just got to watch how people mark it. But sixteen inches is the measurement, edge to edge, on the um, block, the capped end caps, and then when the brush is on the glass and you press it against the glass, the bristles splay and they splay sideways. So this has got an 18 inch splayed width on the glass, but a 16 inch block. Mm -hmm. The next one is, I'll say this one, is a 12 inch all rounder. So these are both 100% um, nylon bristle brushes, and basically there's three ways to agitate. So why would we have different brushes? Well, nylon bristles kind of scratch. They'll either scratch you know, with the bristles at an angle or they'll scratch with the bristles straight up and down. Um, depending on the center ones will be up and down and the outside ones go on an angle. And so this is kind of like a standard waterfed brush for regular work. However, everybody knows that there are some things that don't come off the glass with bristles and scratching. So hydrocarbons, bee poo, artillery fungus, paint over spray, all these sorts of things. So that's when we have window weapon. Now window weapon is, it's a 12 inch brush and it has a block in the middle and then the block has scrubs. This one's fitted with the magic eraser, right? And then you'll also get with that um, a full set of all the different scrubs that we make so that you can change between bronze wall, steel wall, cheese grater, which is a, like a blade one, blue metal, microfiber, um, don't know what that one is. And, uh, and there's a green rubber in here and then white non-scratch pad. So they're all different levels of agitation, similar to what a traditional guy might carry in his towel bag or his rag bag or whatever he wants to call it. Okay. The next brush is this one. This is a 16 inch all rounder, but what's different between this one and this one is that it's pre-fitted. Instead of with a side to side, it's fitted with a fixed Euro adapter. Mm -hmm. The reason we have that is when you go to HDG and uh, max reach, then you're actually going to have a fixed brush. It's not going to be on a swivel because you've got a gooseneck, and so the fulcrum is out here. So if you put that, it'll jackknife, right? So you need to just fix the brush, and then if you're doing deep inset windows or you're working up really, really high, then you'll be using this brush. Mm -hmm. And we felt before we used to say to people, look, just change out the side to side on here, but later on we thought, no, really, we want to give you a brush so that when you want to pull out a gooseneck, you have a brush that's already set up for the gooseneck. And of course, the, uh, the creme de la creme, the, the, the latest and most advanced brush in the world is radial with pivot. So it's a 12 inch radial with pivot that you'll get. And it's a stunning new brush. This is brand new. The first ones arrived in people's homes. Today's January the 10th or the 11th or something. So 2020, so that's like the first ones have arrived in the last week this week okay so this one basically the radial replaces the 12 inch all-rounder um, in the in the future but for the people who've been buying elite right now we still haven't caught up with all the Black Friday sales and the sales that have happened since then so we're currently just including it like as an extra in case it comes usually they come later at the moment and then later it'll be included in the pack and the all-rounder will come out all right. So, okay. so how do you attach the brush to the pole? Oh, what a good idea! So it's really easy. The number one uh, clamp we open, 
and then whether it's with side to side, you'll see there's a little locking system there. Yes. And that stops rotation, so that drops in there, right, in, the, in between the jaws of the clamp, and then we close the lever, mm. and then this won't pull out and it won't twist. Oh, okay. Yep. And then when you go to adjust the vertical angle, we slide on this one, this is not on the radial, but on the side to side, we pull that down, then it's easy to operate, you adjust the angle of the brush, so that the bristles are square on the glass at the angle that you're working, and then you lock that off and make sure that these teeth are really, really tight together. So don't have this loose once you once you burr these. These red teeth, teeth here. The red teeth. Yep, yep. thank you. <laughs> once we burr the red teeth, then you'll need to replace them. All right. Okay. So okay. it's just about setting that up right. In, with each brush as a kit. Yes. If you're a high flow user, which we recommend now, then you take out the high flow tube and you would attach that to here. Can you turn the brush to me so I can see the process? That's there. perfect. How's that? Thank you. So you'd attach the high flow to there and then come back in to the push fit. Okay. So somebody who doesn't have a reach it and just buys and just buys the like one of our brushes, a reach it brush. Mm. Um, what we realized afterwards is that they haven't got this. Right, so they're just letting the, the weight of the tube run on the on the brush itself, but that then stops the brush from working as freely as it should. After that, you'll grab your high flow, 75 feet of high flow, and you'll clip it into the tube runners and then push it into that. To do that, you'd normally lift this up so that you've got full access to the tube runners and then you can just push the tube in there. Okay, check it is an inline TDS meter. It's in particular valuable if you're running with DI only because your DI can exhaust itself while you're using it. And so having check it means that you can actually test the TDS of the water when you are running. All right, All right. so check it, it looks like this. There's a little zero sticker on there which comes off and you need to peel back the silicon cover and put a CR2032, no, CR2450. This silicone, yeah, right, that, like that. that. Ah, okay, back. okay, okay. Is right. there a battery now? No, there's no battery in okay. it. Unless it comes out of America, it'll have a battery, but mm. other than it's a CR2450. So that's something that's not included? Not included. So you need to- Fly batteries. What's the name of that battery? Uh, CR2450. CR2540, okay. 2450. 2450. Anyway, okay. we can check. And then when you do that, please put a piece of electrical tape just across there to give it a double seal um, on that battery housing. Just then, to keep the water from entering? Yep. Okay. Yep. I mean, if you do get water in it, just let us know and we'll replace it for free. But we just know that from time to time, somehow, even though you see the silicon cover is really, really tight, mm. somehow some people still get water inside the check it. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. This. Maybe these are for something else. Mm -hmm. there. These are for another thing, yes. So in this case, if you're using high flow, mm -hmm. then you'll push the these ones on, right? Which I've got the high flow 10 millimeter oh. push fits here. Yes. Then you would have a short piece so we would need also this so that we can connect to put it in the top this little short piece and that should be cut square otherwise you might get a drip out of there if you see this mm. and cut it square side on put that in there like that and now your high flow tube will connect here oh okay okay yep and then when you compact this pole this this will conflict here so you just you know, roll it around or, um, in actual fact, the chances are that you'll actually compact the pole like this if you've got check it still attached. Okay. Yeah, when you put it back into your car. Okay. If you're using an RO system, check it's not as important because the RO is doing most of the work and the DI is really just polishing the water and so it lasts a lot longer. But from an SOP point of view, standard operating procedure, having check it there and saying, okay, every time I um, extend the pole, then I can check that the TDS is still spot free as a huge amount of peace of mind from, from a worker point of view. Owner operators tend to know what's going on more about what's happening with the resin, but a worker is just basically his job is to clean the windows. So you give him a way to check that he's good to go. And what kind of uh, value? Or, uh, uh, you want to see TDS 10 or lower, a little green light down the bottom, there's green, orange and red. Yeah, there's a green 
orange and a red. So if it's less than 10, the green light will be on. Um, this is kind of like a guide, like a TDS meter is an electrical conductivity meter. So what's happening in there, in that little piece there, there are two little electrodes that are going in there. One is sending the electric current and the other one's receiving the electric current. And this is measuring the conductivity of the water. If the water is pure, it reads zero. The more minerals that are in the water, the higher this number goes. But in actual fact, um, it's not a spot-free meter. The best spot-free meter is the human eye. Mm. What you'll find is that the... Uh, like when I was in Sydney, we used to sell DI systems and we preset them to TDS 50 because it was spot free. And we would clean commercial tinted glass with TDS 100 because the spots would never dry in a way that you could see them. So were they there or weren't they there and all that sort of thing. So what? you can't see them. So what does TDS mean? TDS is total dissolved solids, oh. which is a title for parts per million of minerals in water. Okay, I'm very curious. And, and, and don't believe about the parts per billion. If you can't measure parts per million, right, you get zero parts per million, you've got nothing in there that's gonna leave a spot. So going to zero parts per billion, which you can't measure, there's no meter below two parts per million. So it's kind of like myth, myths that, that are so confusing that you don't challenge them, so you believe them. But in actual fact, it's total BS. All right. Wanted to change out. Mm. At this point here, then we're going to disconnect, just disconnect there, the tube. From the, from the brush? From the brush. Yes. Open the top clamp, lift the pole out, grab a radial, let's say, put the brush in, mm. run the tube around, connect the tube, mm. and you've swapped out. All right. Yeah. It looks a little different from the other brushes, definitely. Yeah, and this one has got a much different uh, teeth system in here for the gears. I see you uh, using just one hand here. <laughs> yes, it's much easier to use. It's much better controlled. Mm. And um, there's little things like in the what's different in the radial pack is that wrench there. Yeah. So let me get that out because it's better to demonstrate rather than to tell. The wrench is this one. Yes. Now, there's a separate video on radial. So this is just to give you an overview. Mm. But let's say you feel this is too loose then you can actually come up in here, put that tool in there, tighten it up, and now it's stiffer. So each person's gonna have their own preference as to how they like that to work. So that rotational uh, uh, part of the brush is called a pivot. Pivot, yeah. All right. Yeah. So you can choose the So pivot works is. this way and, and this way. And pivot has a negative angle. So if you wanted to set it like this, mm. and you wanted to clean down here like this, you can, mm. or straight on. Yeah. And also, if you wanted to clean glass balustrades, you can set it up at 90 degrees. So it's uh, quite ergonomic for the back. Yeah. And clean like this. All right. Yep. Mm. So we mm. we want to swap out to a Euro mount. Mm. We'll disconnect the tube, disconnect the brush, and we will choose, for example, A, um, there's four different angles here depending on where you are. The glass is always vertical, right? This is, by the way, HDG. HDG is the code, right? And that so means... Four different angles, heavy duty gooseneck. Yes. And that one is there. So you can choose which angle because the glass is always vertical, but where, if you want the brush to be square on the glass, where you stand, if you're standing way back there, or if you're standing way in here, right, that angle there is changing. So you can imagine if I'm straight in a little walkway and I've got to try and put the brush on the glass, I need 90 degrees. If I'm on the other side of the swimming pool, right, and I put this one in here, then I'm way back here. Yeah. So and it gives, the, gives you more options. Yeah, so that because your efficiency is in um, having the brush square on the glass. Yeah. Now, if this is an extension, let me just get one that's more commonly used, it's the 110 degree one. Yep. Tighten that up a bit. That was very convenient. And then we grab this little piece here, which is an extender. And how do you apply that? Open that up, slide it on until that ping pong goes in between the jaws. And then that is a little bit over tight. The ping pong is for not to rotate. Yeah, either. that's an anti-rotational tool. Yeah. And then that'll click and we're good to go now. 
Okay, this is what you need. The tip. Like that. Yeah. Now we're working. Uh, oh, the tip have the euro mount. There's a euro thread. Ah, okay. Euro thread. And then you will look to hold that on there, spin it on, and turn it around till it is square. All right. And you're ready to clean windows from this angle here. Then we need a little longer uh, high flow <sighs> tube there. Yes, yes, you'd cut a different length okay. for that. But, yes. but you remember that that won't, actually that will work because that doesn't um, pivot. Oh, exactly. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Is that good? That's great. And uh, there's different angles, you said. There's uh, 95, 110. Yes, 95, 110, 125, and 140 degrees for where you are in relation to it. Okay, so let's say now you want to actually go more than this horizontal reach. So this is pretty standard, you know, just a little deep set window. Yep. But you actually want to reach further than that. Then you will take out this. Being the heavy duty gooseneck, we need to undo that from here. Maybe I've taken it off the pole so I don't have as much torque. So keep the brush on the pole and no, take it off. Take that off. Yes. Okay, that's the one we want. And we're going to switch to and take all of this off. I'm going to take the number one section out of your pole and you're going to put max reach in to the number two clamp. The same here. This same little. there. That stops the rotation. So you're solid. And now that's where these were for. These are for max reach. So you've got this much reach. If you say that's enough, then you're going to put this into here. Blink, and you go. And you put it in a fair way so that you've got some overlap in here. Lock that down. And then again, we can put the brush on there and you've got I don't know, what's that? Two feet? 50 millimeters? 50 centimeters? 50 centimeters, Yeah, sorry. something like 50 that. 50 centimeters? Yep. Right, you want a little bit longer than that. Take that one out. Put this one in. That takes you to here. About 70 centimeters, 75 centimeters? Yep, which is uh, maybe two and a half, two and a half feet. Yep. For Americans. And if that's not long enough, ba 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 bam, da 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 do. I notice that you uh, you have to cross that yellow section, right? Yeah, on the, yeah, on the pole. Push, always push your yellow part. The yellow part is your overlap marker, so you oh. want to make sure that you've got enough overlap. Otherwise, you're carrying too much load in the clamp. Okay. And then here we would put. Um, in this case, you could either go to radial, and radial will go straight. Because I saw Peter Thomas put a video up on that today. Who is right. Peter Thomas? Peter Thomas in Perth, Australia. Oh. So we'll push that up into YouTube, that video. So then you can put a radial on or... So you can put the tip back in there. Sweet. And then we go back to putting this brush in here. And then you're going to run your rhino tube directly up. So with the number one section, if you have that, you can actually use every brush. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yes. No, yeah. only radial, only radial and... Radial and the Euro mount. Okay. Yep. So, and, and that's a long, I don't know, six, seven feet mm. um, from the tactical, and then seven, maybe six feet from the tactical. That will be about two meters. That's six feet, two meters. Yeah. And then another foot if it's the Warrior, because this is longer with the Warrior. Oh, I got it. Yep. Yeah. So you can, you can actually clean glass you know, at heights, mm. like deeply recessed this way. Yeah, because the war, you, the lead pack is always the same except for the pole, right? Correct. Either tactical or the warrior. Yeah, you're just choosing tactical, elite, or mm. warrior, elite. All right. The lead pack is always the elite pack. Well, when we're talking about that, maybe you can talk about the warrior and the tactical and right. the difference. So the, basically the tactical elite pack, should I do that a bit more? The tactical elite pack is a three-story kit out of the box so it's about 35 foot reach and the warrior is a four-story kit out of the box is a 44 foot reach something like that 
right? So if you're basic, if 80% of the glass you're cleaning is three stories and below, you'd buy tactical. If 80% of the glass you're cleaning is four stories and below, then you buy warrior. Mm -hmm. Now, but every, every reach at pole can be extended to double its telescopic length. So if tactical is, its actual telescopic length is 25 feet or eight meters, then with plus A, plus B, plus B, adding those in, which we'll talk about on a separate video, you can actually extend this to 50 feet plus, mm -hmm. plus the operator. So 55 foot reach, five stories. Mm -hmm. And the warrior will go out to 75 feet, right? So it'll yep. go from 33 to actually it goes more than double. So except for the length, is there any other difference between the tactical and the warrior? Uh, the composition. Mm -hmm. um, the composition of the tactical is um, the base of it is uh, standard carbon fiber and the top of it is high modulus. And the warrior, the base of the warrior is high modulus and the top is ultra high modulus. The plus A's, plus B's, they're all ultra high modulus. And that, I assume, is to create this amazing rigidity. More rigidity. Yes. So you've got more control, mm. right? The control, the pole, a rigid pole is really critical because it's your drive shaft. Like when you're cleaning windows, right, your brush is actually the thing cleaning the glass. What's the function of the pole is it's a drive shaft, so you're, you're working it. If it's flexing, then you're losing your drive in the flex. And the second thing is because we use um, pivots, mm. then it's also your axle, like you're twisting your wrist. Now, if you've got a flexing pole, then you're going to corkscrew the pole when you twist it rather than, rather than just turn it. You should have a direct relationship between your wrist and the pivot at the top to pivot the brush. That's balance. Mm. So balance is a rubber end cap, which means that when you go to stand the pole against the building, oh, need to get one with a pivot. Without balance, like what we found is that guys would actually break their poles because they were leaning them against buildings or whatever and when they leaned it against the building it because this is round at the bottom it would spin and then the pole would fall over somebody would tuck a tube or knock it or whatever so what we did is we put two feet on the bottom there's three feet there so you've got a choice <laughs> but there are two feet that, that that are on the ground they are parallel to the wall the way they are and then even though you have a pivot here that could make that unstable, right? Because you've got the feet there, then that holds that brush stable on the, on the, on the wall. So if you're standing a, a pole, this is square on the glass or square on the wall, and then those two feet will keep it stable. Yeah? All right. How about safety? Whew. Are we going straight into that? Ah, uh, you can go into other stuff too, okay. but I was no, thinking about... Safety's good. Yeah. Safety's good. So from a safety point of view, the first and most important one is there are several injuries you can get from water fed. And any water fed injury is, is potentially as career terminating as falling off a ladder. So when people say water fed poles are safer than ladders and they hide behind that and they don't give you any extra safety equipment, then the truth is you can't fall off a water fed pole, but you can damage your neck, you can damage your rotator cuff, you can damage tennis, the tennis elbow symptoms, the carpal tunnel symptoms, the decavein symptoms, which is this part of your wrist here, the lower back, um, all like end your career. I actually stopped doing water fed in 2009 because I had a, a knotting muscle right there and it just froze me. And that is from working off center and pushing fiberglass and hybrid poles at extreme heights. So we give you prisms. Now pr these prisms are very, very fine. Um, I'm not gonna put the neck thing on, but basically I look this way, I see that way. So I can be cleaning like this and I'm actually seeing everything which is happening, but I can still see you, Martin, yeah? And you can see my eyeballs here, right? So I've got full peripheral vision. These are not ones that block your peripheral vision. There's some that you can get which are like this, but these have got massive amount of peripheral vision. I can see my feet. I can see all the way to the edge of the table there, yeah, from here. And I can see up, right? And I can see Steph over there. And I can see the television over there, right? So I can choose. Now, it comes with a neck string so that if you do want to drop them off your face altogether, then you can just quickly knock them off your face and they'll be held on the neck string, right? But you have a lot of peripheral vision so you can actually walk around and feel safe and you can see people coming up to you and all that sort of thing. But these will stop you from working like this. And I'll tell you another point about that. What I've noticed is that guys who don't wear prisms, instead of working at the ideal angle, which is around this, around 60 degrees, with a pole at 60 degrees, 
When they start working at heights, they go further and further back. Why? There's no logical reason why, from a, from a physics point of view about cleaning windows, what's happening is the further back I go, the less I have to look up. Right? So it's their neck discomfort, which is actually driving them into an inefficient um, cleaning position. And then, of course, then the pole has got more gravity pulling on it. The most amount of gravity on a pole is when it's like that. And the least amount of gravity on the pole rigidity is when it's like that. So, like, there's an ideal place, and then when you start going below that, then the pole is carrying more gravity, so it's got more propensity to flex, becomes less efficient. So basically, you said the ideal position was about sixty per sixty degrees. Sixty degrees. So when you get tired, it's easy to forget, and you start. In, if you don't have the prisms, you will maybe you'll change. Up, well, you see guys working way too far back. Ah. I used to do it too, but I never knew what I was doing. Mm. Your brain is telling you to do it to protect your body. Mm. Right, but you wear prisms, you're just looking straight ahead. Mm. There's no stress on the, the trapezoids, yeah, mm. coming down here and into the shoulders. Mm. And that, and some guys basically they really work it, um, they can get tension headaches at night and things mm. like that. That's all because you're over stressing mm. this, and there's not a, enough blood flow back up to the brain with a, with right. a contracted muscle. So, it's a very important tool, it's a small tool that oh, makes a huge difference. I know, <laughs> yeah, great. There's a lot to know, right? Yeah. So, we have the prism, then we have another. Yep, we've got power and control. Now, power and control are handles for um, when you're doing big commercial work. So, we're trying to save you from repetitive motion and injuries. Mm. Yep. And you wouldn't use these on residential, but they're there in the kit because they're the right thing to do. As a responsible manufacturer, we know we have a potentially injurious product that you're going to be using with repetitive motion. So you have power and control handles, and we'll make a separate video on this, but basically the logic is, um, um, when we're cleaning two-story windows, we're doing it like this, yep, so you can see if you focus on this point here, right, as I go down, as I come up, as I go down, as I come up, it's the elbow and the wrist that are working. You have a straight arm when you're working, actually. Uh, like that. Well, no, not when you're using just two-story work, you're doing this. Okay. You're really working with your arms. All right. Um, and and the, the pivot points of the wrist and the elbow. So the principle of I power think, and control. I think con power, control go first, I think. No, but I'm not going to put control on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me just take balance off to make it easier for myself. That may be too tight. But if you want to put uh, control on, yeah, it goes control on, on top. Just, yeah. yeah. All right. But I think we'll just make a separate video, otherwise, this could yeah. go forever. This is the power handle, yes. which is the easy one to demonstrate. So basically, you'll put the clamps on top of the pole. So have a look up here. The clamps will be on top of the pole. You'll follow that line down, and then you'll twist this around to the same place, and then you'll close it off. Now, I'm going to hold the pole like this. My elbow is straight, my wrist is straight, and I can clean like this. So I'm actually changing the, the motion from the wrist moving and the elbow moving to the shoulder, which is a major joint. It'll never wear out from repetitive motion injury in a, in a straight line, which it's designed to do, which basically, if you think about marching, the arm is meant to be in this angle. So you've got the pole right close to the body. The arm is working properly. You're working much closer to square, and you're running with a straight arm. Yeah? And so you can see all of the movement is being taken up between this point and this point. Right, that's the pivot. Oh. Check that spinning. Yep, that's good. So this is the pivot point one, and the pivot point two is the shoulder. Right, when I'm doing this, pivot point one is the wrist, and pivot point two is the elbow. And the shoulder really doesn't move very much at all. Yeah? All right. Okay, so then you compare that to this. Yeah? It looks way, uh, easier. Way easier. But... You know, you it looks really, more it looks more natural. Yeah, and, but you can't. If you're doing a house and there's not, you got to go up, down, up, down, around, around, for over brickworks and all that. It kind of is, you know, too too boring. Mm. But a uh, business park, school, university, you know, commercial building, high work, especially extreme work, right? You're just working like this, and then you can work like this with your with your legs as well. Mm. So power and control is an incredible efficiency creator if you've got several hours on, on large glass. Okay, so... 
off. Shock stop is um, it's a it's a double function. It works as an insulation sleeve at any point that you want it. Right. So. What does insulation mean? Uh, from electricity. Oh, okay. Can you just make a note that these clamps should be adjusted on a tube? Mm -hmm. So they should, there should be a number seven section that when they do these clamps up, that there's a number seven section in it, and then they tighten it, right? So there's three things I've had to adjust. Mm -hmm. All because there's nothing in them when they tighten them, right? So and I can put that in. If you watch this, I'm just gonna have a look. Here, I'm gonna put it in with a, like an eight inch overlap, something like that something like that, and I can lock that down, and now this is working. It should be aligned, the tube runner there, I see, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's this. So one. now, this is acting as an extension, four foot six extension, gives me some extra reach. If I don't need that extension, but I'm working their power, now just to give you an idea, you will be dead in 0 0.3 seconds if you contact power with a carbon fiber pole that has perfect conductivity. 0 0.3 seconds. You will not know what's happened. You're just here and then not here. Right? So this is a lifesaver. It's, uh, yeah, it's, we've already, we used to have pole skins and we've had a guy just explode his pole. Um, but last year, a guy in America just was early in the morning and he was walking, right, and he kept his pole. You should always compact the pole when you walk the pole. But anyway, he was walking a fully extended pole and he touched a power line and he just drops dead right there. That's a very good advice, yeah. that when you're walking, it's, they're so tall, the yeah. poles, that yeah. collapsing them is important so you don't touch the power line. Yeah, because you just, what happens, you should do a site risk assessment, you should keep it in mind, but he was like, you know, before seven o'clock in the morning, maybe a little bit groggy, but the other thing is you could be four o'clock in the afternoon and you've done a site risk assessment and then your brain has gone cloudy because it's mm -hmm. like, you know, 100 degrees or 40 degrees mm -hmm. Celsius. And you just get, I know what happens, you get cloudy, you start forgetting and, and not being cognizant about what, what is happening. So you should have rules, standard operating procedures, which keep you like safe. Compact the pole, walk the pole, erect the pole. What's happening when you're getting tired, you don't want to put it down and put it back up again, so you just walk it. And I know also that this shock stop is super light, so using yeah. it is not the big, it's not heavy it's at like all. It's 700 grams, which is, mm. A third of a pound. How many mm. ounces is that? Five ounces. Five ounces. Mm. Yeah. No, I remember first time I tested yeah. it. I was like, it's crazy. so light. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Is this crazy. even working? I was thinking. Yeah. And we, we pay way more for shock stop than we see other companies have got protecting um, units, but they make them out of fiberglass and fiberglass is crazy heavy. So mm. we just think from an ergonomics point of view, then even though Kevlar is more expensive, it's still better for you in the long run. You know? Great. Oh, we have a PDF of a safety manual on electrocution, which you, <coughs> pardon me, must be more than one, <laughs> <coughs> which you can add to your um, standard operating procedures, Yeah. right? How to avoid electrocution. There's a lot of stuff to know. Great. Scary stuff. All right. Now, let me just show you this. I'm going to put that up against the wall, right? Whoa. And it wants to slide down, right? Mm. There's no way to stand that mm. so easily. The there goes one spot there, yeah? But if it had balance on there, we don't make balance for shock stop, but if it had balance on there, mm. uh, we will sometime this year, but you put balance on there and that never happens. All right, so about safety, there's one thing I was thinking, is the grip. Can you tell oh, me a little grip. short about that? This is grip. Okay, so to do grip, I need a couple of things. So grip is all about glass balustrades, glass fencing, pool fencing, and things like that. So you're working only with the number one pole? Only with Section? the number one pole, yeah. Yes. See, we found the blade. Yeah. Mm, Next time I'll give you a better blade. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. And a longer blade, because I think that's the that's final the section, extended, right? Yeah. It cannot be extended. <laughs> okay. All right. right. Now, grip is a, an innovation from uh, Peter Thomas in Perth, one of my favorite guys in the world. 
And he does a lot of ground. He's in Perth, Australia, where every, everybody has a swimming pool, so he does a lot of pool fences. I used to, in Sydney, do a lot of buildings that had glass balustrades, right? So I know exactly. But what happened, I was at the UAMCC last year, and, uh, uh, and I was doing demonstrations for five hours straight, and I was just holding the number one section and demonstrating like this, grip nose to glass. And at the end of it, my hand and the inside of my forearm was really sore. And that's when I realized what Peter was telling me, is that the, you, you, know, you can't grip something small you should ideally, like when you look at reach it, like our tube sections of the handles, the reason why we have them at, at um, in millimeters, it's 46 through to 50 millimeters, so just short of two inches, is because there's a, a medical study which says what's the ideal grip size for, for a grip, and you should never have your fingers and your thumbs overlapping, right? So fingers and thumbs can mildly overlap, but not much overlap, right? Mm. So that's why we develop grip. Now grip comes in two parts. This part you can use as optional. If you're going to be holding the top of the pole a lot, then you can slide this on. It's actually easier if you put some detergent, some normal window cleaning liquid on there and just slide it on. So I'm just going to imagine it's up here. And that way when you go to grip the pole up higher, then you've got a, a rubber grip that you can set it at exactly where you want. And then the bottom, uh, basically if you're using this, You'll have a piece of rhino tube which is maybe four feet long so it'll go through to the top of the through here from the side to side and you'll put a little push fit here so that you can come back around to here <coughs> so basically you put the you rhino tube going all the way in coming yeah. out here and then going in yeah here yeah into the push fit there ah. and since the pole is, is shorter the flow rate will be still be good Sure, you haven't got as much gravity yeah. in that sense. Yeah. Now, maybe that's what this is for. Okay, so now this is a rhino tube. Ah. Yeah, so if your rhino tube comes around here and into there, mm. right, that's an adapter in the pack <coughs> mm. so that you can have rhino tube working. And then you would connect your rhino tube that's hanging out about this far, not very far at all. Mm -hmm. You'd connect it to, the, to that push bit and then you'd put that on and it's the same kind of uh, lever clamp yep standard standard yeah. lock that down and now when i'm doing glass balustrades oh then you connect your real rhino tube to here right or no that's a 10. anyway I, i've got to think about if you've got high flow there maybe there's some other gadget that we can do for that mm. so um, now when I'm doing my glass balustrades and my low work and all of that, this, this is now a comfortable grip. Mm. No so, cramping. No cramping. Wonderful. Right. So the grip, the shock stop, the prisms and the power and control, power and control all yeah. helping with safety all and efficiency. Safety, efficiency, ergonomics. Mm. Because the thing is, there's two people in the plan. When you, buy, when you get to be a window cleaner and you buy a pack, there's you now and you later. Mm. So I get a lot of guys go, oh, I don't have any pain, I don't have any uncomfort or discomfort. And you go, well, if you've got no discomfort, that doesn't mean that you later won't. Because mm. we find any guy who's over 40 who's been a window cleaner for 10 years or more in Waterford and you show him prisms, he puts them on once and he never takes them off, right? Because he's already got a damaged neck. Mm. So, you know, you don't have to be feeling pain in order to know that you're doing long-term damage. That's what repetitive motion injury is about. Yeah. Mm. Great. Uh, there's still a few things we haven't gone through. One is this Scrubs Ooh. holster. Yes. Yeah. So Scrubs holster, this has mega clip. It's same as the reload. Uh, we're going to go through reload. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. Look. If I had this on my belt, right, I can have the Scrubs holster like that or eat. just push push that down, slide that off, that's still on my belt. And reload has one as well, but I can still have the same one on my belt. Mm. Take that out so it's not a distraction. And then I can slide that on to the same mega clip mm. like that. And they've got these, so you can do that with one hand, yeah? Oh, it's a little... Uh... Little finger catch up. Oh, okay. Yeah. You take it off, you just pull it up. Yeah, and the idea of reload is that you can just, let me get a brush out. Mm. 
easy. Uh, maybe a 12. Oh, no, I got the same thing. All right, so you're carrying this on the side of your hip. You've got the 12 inch on your brush, on your pole, sorry, and you've got your 16 inch on your hip. So if you need to change out, you, you do a building that's got a lot of small windows and you'll grab the 12 inch and then you've got a lot of big windows and you'll grab the 16 inch and then put it back on your hip. That means you don't have to go back to your vehicle, backwards, forwards, back and mm. forwards. Or leave line. it on the ground and or forget it. And lose it yeah. Or <laughs> and it's protecting it basically and it can be efficient. It can be like that, yeah. yes. All right. Uh, also, talking about the brushes, I saw there's a lot of these yellow plastic tools. Ah, yes. What is this and these, how do you use it? Well, the rule of efficiency is... Tell us, tell us. <laughs> take a breath. A place for everything and everything in its place. Mm -hmm. So we give you Keeper. All right, keep it, you screw into a panel, you just make a panel for storage of your brushes, because we give you five brushes. So you, you don't want to throw them in the back of the pickup or on the bottom of the van or in a bucket or something like that. The problem with nylon is that nylon actually absorbs water, right? When it absorbs water, it, it, it has a memory. Then you go and put it on top of this and you can see all these bristles are like this. Then those bristles dry, you pick it up and it has the same shape, right? So you basically, like a, like a bed head, like why we have dry hair when we're finished doing our hair and it goes to a mess when it's wet and if you leave it wet and it dries it dries a mess right mm. so the same logic with nylon so rather than guys just throwing all these 200 dollar brushes into a bucket and having them all trashed right we give you keeper you basically screw that onto a onto a board let me just open that lever so this you can keep in your truck or in your garage in your or, truck or your shop or yeah. whatever mm. and then in this case it is, that's because we, I just had that on loosely. Let me grab another one. Take the new radial. A radial, and then you'll just... That's another one, right? Is it? Yeah. Mm. Tightened without something in it. Can you show me? All right, so that's okay. easy. And uh, you keep it uh, organized and yeah. you protect the brush. Yeah, and if you want to protect it even more, or you want to protect the brush that's on your pole, then you can use these PET reusable plastic covers. Right. Yeah, so they all come with that and they're all designed to be reusable because we don't want to be throwing plastic delivery boxes into the tip for no reason. So we made them reusable for you. Great. So you get one keeper for every brush so that you can organize your brushes. Oh, I also see the kink there. What oh. is this and why would I want a kink? Oof. I'm pushing you. I know I'm pushing you, but I just want to... Here we go. No, it's right. Yeah. Nice thing to do. Yeah. Okay, so kink basically is um, our little online tap. Yeah? Online tap. Yeah. What? So where's my pole? Oh, it's inside here. Mm. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you've got whatever section you've got, mm. you can basically put kink on the pole by pulling that tight. The hose is coming down the pole. Yeah. Right, and then... If this is your hose coming down through through the tube runners or whatever, yeah, right, then you'll have some hose hanging down here. Mm. And if you want to turn the water off, you just kink, kink up. And why would you do that instead you, of? You want to save water, like especially the guys who are running off with tanks. And oh, trucks, okay. And they might want to just you know, they need to move the pole from here to there, mm. and they don't want to have to go back. And with the hoses, mm. you can have the pole fully extended at forty feet. You just want to block off the, the water. Then mm. you just grab the grab the, the hose, the, the, the high flow, mm. kink it, and then shove it in there. So that's reach it kink, yeah. All right. Last question. Uh, no, it's not. No, you, more. This, I'm sure there's more. But I see you see some tool here, this tool here, and this. I don't think. And these adapters. Yeah. And these. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the little things. The devil is in the detail, right? Yeah. It's all okay, about so that. So, this little baby here is an Eric Gillian. Eric's from Dunedin, New Zealand. It's a pole cleaning brush. Eric Gillian is who? For me, who don't know? From Dunedin, New Zealand. Oh, okay. All right. So, yep. basically, this, um, you see there's some holes in here in the aluminum tube. Yep. Right? So, you put your high flow into here, mm -hmm. and you've got your, taken your pole apart. So you can take the clamps off and then you've got all the tube sections. You hook the hose up to here and then the water's going to spray out here. So you've got your bristles going up and down, agitating, cleaning the inside of the pole, especially if you've been using tube internally. You're dragging dirt and grit from underneath, from the ground and you're dragging it into the pole. Then it gets caught between the clamps and the carbon fiber and then it starts wearing down the softest part, 
which could be the clamp or the carbon fiber, but it's going to wear something. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a lot of you know work where you're running internal tube, then you're going to want to clean your pole regularly. And so we give you a pole cleaning brush. How when you say regularly, how often? No, well, it depends how much, how many times they use internal tubing. I don't use internal tubing at all, so it's not an issue. Okay. Right, but it's there because we want to make sure that you're like the the poles we sold. We started Richard in 2011. 2012 but the poles we sold in 2011 2012 are still you know in commission they've got new clamps on them like the 2020 clamps they can well fit onto those poles but they're still using them the reason is because we actually designed them to last and we also give you the ability to care for the pole yeah okay so that's that one the next one i noticed these these would have solved my problem earlier you know how i cut that little piece of tube ah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay so they are in here already forget so about that there. What's this? These are, um, these are alternatives, right? So if you don't like the configuration of a 1010 or a, a high flow to high flow here, mm. Mm. right? This is just held on with a cable tie, yep. So we give you extra cable ties and extra alternatives as to how to set this up, yeah? So why would I want you that? You might have rhino tube. So you'll see there, that's a, that's a high flow, that's a rhino tube. Ah, okay. That's a high flow, high flow, that's a high flow rhino tube. And so, why, what's this? Yeah, this I wanted to show you Small those. bluish thing. These are really important. <laughs> All right. If you're, if you're joining a whole lot of high flow or rhino tube together, mm. then these are called collars, right? So for example, if you're joining two 75 foot lengths of high flow together, yeah, and you want to use that as your 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 hose, then you, you don't want the push fit from coming unstuck. Let me just try and do an example. If I get a little piece of tube. So if you're like this and this is your high flow and you're dragging it along the ground and then it hits a rock and then this opens up and you and it disconnects. Ah, oh, right? now I get it. So that's a basically a collar. If you want to open these, you pull this collar back. Mm. Right. Anything that pulls that collar back is going to release the teeth and then the, mm. the hose will come out. So it's a time saver. So if you put these anywhere where you want it to be permanent, you put this collar in, the, the collar can't come back. So, so this will never come out. Oh. So it's a lock. Perfect. Yeah. And, and so you get a bunch of those so that, you know, basically it's everything. We know what happens when you're a window cleaner. So we give you all these, you know, parts that make enormous amount of sense because you're, I'm a window cleaner before I was a manufacturer. Yeah? <laughs> okay, um, how's that, that man? Did we that, do good? I, what's this? Oh, those are for, this is mostly for the American market. This is uh, called GHT thread, which is a garden hose thread. Um, and then two um, Gardena. What I didn't see was the, Oh, here, there it is. Okay, so let's open that then because I can demonstrate it. What do you call this, a Gardena? It's a Gardena, but with garden hose thread. Oh. So the American, the American garden hose thread is a unique thread that's not used anywhere else in the world or in America for any other reason except for joining hoses together. So you'd put this onto another hose or you'd put it onto the spigot, all right? And that leaves you with a Gardena push. And then you want to connect your high flow to it, then you'll lock that down like that. And I also see there's another device on it. Oh, this is a like a valve. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So you can just turn it off. You can open and close it okay. somehow. There it is. Yeah. The All right. Now it's loose. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, one thing I saw that I actually didn't go through was that there is some spare parts. Yeah, for the brush. But okay. Yes. So the spare parts for the brush, there's one for each um, brush, but th these will be consolidated because there's some things we don't need for every brush. Mm. You'll see the collar is here for side to side. So for those people who want a, um, like you'll see it fitted here. Mm. So we've got it fitted to anything which is a window weapon. Mm -hmm. It's got the collar and then it's a bayonet lock. So you can actually undo it up high. It's a little bit dicky, but, but it's possible. You slide it down and then you do it up down low. Oh, there it is. Oh. There. And this makes it not rotate. Yeah, it stops it from spinning. From spinning, yes. Not rotate. All right. Okay, so then it's fixed. 
And that, but you just do that for window weapon only because window weapon sometimes you need the, the directional force, yeah? And there's also some other tools. We have videos on our YouTube channel how to yeah. maintain your brush. This is like all the maintenance and changing between rhino tube and high flow, mm -hmm. you know, so we basically thought about all the things that could happen to you, mm -hmm. anything you want to do to service the brush, any parts that you might have that fail, like this little, sometimes this little cylinder here kind of strips. So we just got everything in there. There's a little pokey thing to be able to clean the jets, a little, little pin mm. thing so you can clean any jets if you get debris. Yep. Oh, I didn't point out this. I noticed it, but I didn't point it out. You see in here, look closely. So in the, in the, in the reach it, um, uh, constructor of the reach it brushes, the all-rounder in the window weapon, right? You'll see the little bulges there. Those are little filters that are gonna catch your, any debris. So if you drag your hose on the ground, the dirt will get in the hose It'll come into the hose and now it'll get caught. Now if we don't do that, like in the past, what you'll, so the filter is in here, but before that, the water would come in here, come around here or come around here, head into the hydro blade, right? And then the centered hydro blade jets would block. If you see other people's um, rinse bars, they'll come in the middle and then the water will go to the outside. So you'll see their outside jets block. Right, so then you've got to poke the, the debris back into the water flow, open all this up, and we thought, well, that's a bit laborious if we just put a water filter in there. Now, then later on, if this gets blocked and you have loose flow, then you'll just basically, you know, connect it with a push fit to your water supply and then blast the debris back out, and then you can reuse it. Sweet, and there's one in here too. You that's a time it. saver. Oh, this is, yeah, because it's not yeah, transparent. Not, not all right, transparent, but okay. it's there. Like we try and think of everything, like everybody who says anything which goes wrong with anything that could possibly go wrong, we take our time to think about how to fix it and then fix it. Hmm. Okay, so a lot of people say what's Connect in there for? Now, I can tell you how people use Connect. Some people use Connect just as a traditional pole, right? But every section in Connect pulls apart. Okay, so you can actually use, you know, five sections of it, three sections of it, two sections of it, or whatever. But if you have, in particular, plus A and plus B, like on a tactical, plus A goes between one and two. So you put plus A in there, and then you have a full working pole. If you have plus A and plus B, imagine plus A is in here, right? What is plus A and plus B? Are the extensions. Ah. Oh. So that's how we extend the pole to double its telescopic length. Okay. Right? with the, the plus A and plus B. Mm. So for, for tactical, the plus A is here and the plus B is here between four and five. So then you would open that up, put plus B in there. Yep. Yeah? Mm. For um, warrior, plus A is between three and four. Mm. Yep, in there. And one and two? And between, no. It's between three and four and five and six. Okay. There. All right. Yep. This is to connect the extensions. You can use it as a standalone pole. You can use it, let's say that you, so we're talking about connect and then how to, um, if you're working near power, let's say this is underneath the tactical, yeah? Yes. So we open clamp four. So we're working with tactical. And open. that pulls out. And so we have, this is section four and we wanted to work near power right so if we want to work near power we're going to need shock stop open that up a little bit so now let's say i want to work with four sections of the tactical and i want to put shock stop on oh it doesn't fit right <laughs> <laughs> oh what a surprise <laughs> so we need seven Seven, six, and five. All right. All right. Go, go here. <laughs> so we open number five in the connect to put number four. Yeah. It makes sense. Yes. Yes. Right. Now I get it. <laughs> and now you're working with shock stop and just four sections of mm. the tactical. And why would you want to do that? Because you're working lower near power. Yeah. So you're, you're saying, I need, I, I need to go within, let's say, two meters of power. Mm. I don't want, you're not going to go within like a foot of power. Mm. But at that point, when in your risk assessment, you've got to say there's a risk that something could go mm. wrong. Mm. Mm. So maybe I'll forget, maybe I'll make an accident, maybe I'll trip. Mm. So at that point, I'm going to make sure I've got an insulation handle. So you can mm. use Connect, but you don't have to have 
40 feet of pole mm. with connect. You could just have like 14 feet of pole, or you could do the same with the number one section. So it's lighter, basically. Lighter, yeah, lighter and more nimble. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, everything is modular, everything can fit together, and it's really designed that you can have any window anywhere, anytime, and you can clean it faster, better, safer.